Welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at we talk health podcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro and we are here today talking with Donald Jordan and Mara Johnson. They both work at Pathways. Donald is the program manager and Mara is the recovery navigator coordinator. How are y'all today? Good. How are you? I'm Good. doing well. Thank Thanks y'all for, for coming on. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So today we're going to be talking about opioid use and mental health during a pandemic. Now, clearly, 2020 is not really shaping up the way we wanted it to. <laughs> Whenever New Year's rang in, we were like, yeah, 2020 is going to be the greatest year. Not quite. Not so much. Had some surprises. Yeah. A few. So that being said, what kind of impact has a pandemic made on what you guys are seeing over at Pathways? We've definitely seen an increase in people seeking treatment for substance use disorders, as well as mental health issues. Okay. Um, we've seen a rise. I also work in the hospital here. And so we've seen a rise in cases, people coming through the hospital with sure. substance use disorders seeking help. Mm -hmm. are, there, are there more substances that are being quote unquote abused more than others or is it? I would say right now our number one substance would be alcohol. That's what okay. we're seeing the most of inside of the hospital. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it pathways uh, for detox, we're probably seeing more opioids than we are anything else. Yeah, I would say that's about right. Gotcha. Yeah. We people are know more that. likely to come into the hospital emergency room with alcohol related stuff unless there's an overdose correct gotcha we know the opioid epidemic is a pretty hot topic nowadays so i mean i, I will I, say we've had the state has put a lot of emphasis on us raising the level of the quality of care for opiate use disorder and so at pathways we have grown significantly in that area everything from medication assisted recovery to the recovery navigators in the ER. I mm -hmm. mean, really, we're situated now to be able to walk with a person dealing with that disorder from the moment they present in the emergency department, mm -hmm. because there's been some disaster or some overdose reversal, all the way through long-term follow-up of care. Good. So Mara and the navigators get involved there at the very beginning, and then they help get them, if they need to go to Pathways Detox or anywhere else for detox, they help facilitate that and then help get them into outpatient treatment or residential, which I know with the pandemic, residential treatment is becoming a little more difficult mm -hmm. because places stop either stop taking people or they stay full or we've had to make all of our rooms single occupancy okay that was my question had been there in the what, past so yeah what exactly does residential mean so i'm not clinical so i'm, sure. I'm learning as i'm asking yeah. but to me residential means i do this on my own in my house is that what that means or does it mean something else a residential treatment facility would mean somebody would go and stay there normally they start out around 28 days and then they they can go up to a year some programs are two years gotcha. but you actually live at that facility stay there and get your treatment that makes sense okay and they have we do a residential detox at pathways which is short term because mm -hmm. um, that's for, for detox purposes to get rid of whatever substance it is you need right. to get out of your system and then from there most people transition into a residential treatment program where they actually learn the tools that they need to maintain recovery gotcha so Mara, let me ask you a question. How do you feel like substance use has changed because of or surrounded by COVID? What do you think you're seeing even in the clients and patients that you work with? I see a lot of people who are losing their jobs. Maybe they've been in recovery for some period of time. They've now lost their job. Uh, they can't afford their apartment anymore. They can't go to meetings because most of the meetings are closed down or they're only doing them by, by Zoom or mm -hmm. some people just don't want to go to a meeting because they're afraid with with everything that's going on with COVID. And sure. so we've seen a high number of people who are relapsing. I also think that, you know, people who aren't working or maybe working from home isolation is is key to that. I worked from home for about a month. And, mm -hmm. and after that, I begged Donald to find something for me to do and let me back in. I, I just, you know, I'm in recovery myself. So I understand the importance of staying connected to people. Sure. Isolation is very dangerous for people like me. We've but. seen that a lot, even in terms of the mental health aspect. So much of the supportive system involves other people and the way that you grab a cup of coffee with somebody or you meet somebody for lunch. And so when all of those oh, yeah. things are taken away, 
You've got folks who generally might deal with anxiety or depression or substance use issues it's ripped away a lot of their supports. Sure. We've been lucky that we were already set up for telehealth at Pathways, mm -hmm. but through this, it kind of pushed our efforts about five years forward. Sure. And so our quantity has been the same. People are still asking for help, but we're able to do that via telehealth, which has been huge. Yeah, that's great. I was gonna say, I feel like friendships and the connections you make with people are, and you know, nowadays almost as important as water is to your body Absolutely. or oxygen. Like you, you just have to have that human connection. So that's great that you guys are still able to do telehealth visits. COVID has been a wild ride for us as an organization, although it has, I think we're now used to this insanity a little more. Sure. And so we're able to function with that better, but we had to completely transform the way we do inpatient care, mm -hmm. outpatient turned upside down. but. The folks that we work with and even the clients that we work with, as well as the other staff at Pathways, I think have taken it well. And we even have conversations with each other about how it's impacting us and how that stuff is changing. Some people like being able to work from home. Other folks come into the office because they're going to pull a Mara and go crazy if they stay at home. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so that has been, it's been interesting. I do miss seeing my clients' faces in the Physically, flesh sure. with our MAT clinic. They do still come in. Some people get injections. We do other kind of urine drug screens. So we do still get to see them, but behind a mask, behind another mask is a little mm -hmm. different. Coworker asked our boss when we would be doing counseling in person again. And she said, well, whenever you're ready to do counseling with you in a gown oh, yeah. and a PPE Full gown PPE. Mm -hmm. and a mask and a shield and the other person then in a mask know. and you sitting six feet away, if you think it's better for them to have counseling, looking at a stormtrooper. <laughs> um, we can open up, but otherwise it'll be a little longer. Yeah. So we've been glad to be able to keep offering it that way. And we're definitely seeing an increase in the crisis area over at Pathways for people coming in for crisis stabilization mm -hmm. as well as detox. Um, we have two units now, one in Jackson here on summer, and we have another one that's operating in Milan General. Okay. Both of our units stay full. Yeah. And we most of the time have a waiting list of people trying to get in as sure. well. We've seen an increase in that as well. Around the time the Recovery Navigator program started is a partnership we have with the state of Tennessee where we cover the emergency departments at the West Tennessee Healthcare facilities. Okay. And anybody in the emergency department can refer a navigator to any patient that presents that has some kind of substance use issue. Okay. And so like Mara said, a lot of probably two thirds of the substances are alcohol because there are so many other medical issues that present at the same time. But I think initially the state anticipated that being opiate use. Sure. And so around the same time the Navigator program started, we had also started what's referred to as MAT, but medication assisted treatment. Okay. Which we have some advertisements in the office, like nobody goes to the hospital having a heart attack, asking somebody to do exactly what you do for heart attacks that you did 50 years ago. Right. But for some reason, there's still this kind of pull that addiction should be treated the same way it was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. But science has changed, medication has changed. What we understand about brain structure and neurological differences for somebody who's addicted to a substance, there are medications now that can assist with that. Sure. And so for alcohol, we use Vivitrol, which is a once a month injection, and it actually blocks the receptors in your brain that get a buzz from okay. alcohol. And so because of that, your brain's reward loop craving and then rewarding by drinking, that just gets turned off completely. Gotcha. And so most folks lose the desire. The cravings are either gone or significantly reduced. Mm -hmm. And if they drink on top of it, their body's still gonna get drunk, but there's not gonna be any kind of pleasure or Euphoric any sensation feeling. of, right. yeah, kind of. Interesting. Kind of a total disconnect from your brain and your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. We do probably between 60 and 80 patients a month that come in for Vivitrol, and we've seen major success. We, When patients were coming into the office, we would often have them stop back by the front desk and get a new picture for their medical record on their mm -hmm. second visit because they look completely different That's great. than the first. Yeah. And so obviously we include counseling and all the other kinds of sports we can offer, but it's been a major help. We've got people all across the spectrum. So that's for alcohol and opiates. It works for okay. opiates now as well. And then we started last summer offering buprenorphine, which is often known as Suboxone, offering okay. that through Pathways as well. It's had a bad rap in the past, and a lot of that is well-deserved, but has often been on the side of the provider, mm -hmm. where providers will 
overprescribe and take cash, which has caused a kind of stigma around the medication. It's different from Vivitrol, which blocks that receptor completely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Suboxone kind of partially blocks it and partially fills it, I guess, yeah. so that it meets those cravings without you needing anything else on top of it. And gotcha. it has another kind of chemical mixed into it, which prevents people from getting high off of it and prevents kind of overdose likelihood. It has a longer half-life. So instead of somebody injecting heroin, which we're seeing a ton of, they take this daily medication to treat those cravings and prevent other use. Yeah, so it's it's for opiates only, and that continues to grow. And I think part of the reason we insurance companies more and more are paying for it, state insurance is paying for it. We have other grants to support people who don't have any insurance. And I think they're pushing it to a place like Pathways because everybody's going to audit us all the time. That's what we're used to, to make sure we're not misusing funds. And we already offer all the other kinds of recovery support services Mm -hmm. people need. So if they come to us for medication-assisted treatment, we know that they're going to get all the services they need. And so it's been a big success. And MAR has been great. And they follow folks. So again, we follow them all the way from the emergency department to down the road. Yeah, our program's been going for a year now and our first navigator patient, I actually still keep in touch with him and he's been okay. involved with MAT getting Vivitrol at Pathways. And oh. so the MAT, it's great to watch these clients come in and kind of be at some sort of bottom and they get involved with counseling, they get involved with peer support, they get involved with you know medication assisted recovery mm-hmm. and you really get to watch them grow and kind of come back into themselves and see the light come on yeah, in them again. You know, great. these women are getting their children back and. They have jobs, they're productive members of society. And so it's really great to watch these people rebuild their lives and to be a part of that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. So when it comes to like mental health surrounding the pandemic, I know we we touched on it a little bit, but are you guys seeing more anxiety issues, more depression, both? There is a lot of anxiety that shows up and depression, although I would say for most folks, they may have even already had it. But again, with the rest of those supports, they're able to stay on top of it. Sure. But during the pandemic, you lose so many of those supports, that becomes a bigger deal. And then anxiety as well, we're seeing an increase because there's so much that we always think we can control. That's part of where anxiety comes from anyways, trying to control things that we have no ability to control. And the pandemic is just kind of a slap in the face over and over that you have no control right, over right. how this thing is going. And so like Mara said, it comes down to your job and your income. And if your kids have to be at home and you work a minimum wage job, there's no way for any of that to work together, right. but there's no control over it. So I think that has increased some anxiety. And then other folks who have more acute mental illness, we're looking at schizophrenia or obsessive compulsive disorder, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. One of our biggest concerns at Pathways, which telehealth has helped out with, is to make sure those people continue getting the treatment they're getting so that they can live a regular productive life. Because so many people now, it's easy if you miss one appointment, then you can just start to close in, stay at home and yeah. Yeah, of course. So we've, our staff have been diligent about making sure to keep up with those folks, but it has been depression and anxiety. And again, probably anxiety predominantly starting up new. We see clients all the time who manage a remarkable amount of things and are fine. Mm -hmm. But this one thing on top of it, that's not only affecting them, but is affecting the rest of their family and everybody they work with or whatever. That's been another push. Yeah, sure. But a few months in, yeah, I remembered calling Mara. It was about a month in. I knew she'd been staying home. I was like, it's, I don't care if you go to the hospital or not, but you got to get back yep. up here. And her mood really did turn around then too, just remembering that we're in this work because we love it. Yeah. Right. It's more important now than it ever has been. Right. You know, with everything that's going on, you have so many things happening. And so, you know, our clients need us more than ever. Right. So it's important that we're able to show up and, and be there for them. Sure. And they're troopers. I mean, they're, they're our clients <laughs> are impressive folks. They are. Yeah. And they say, you know, people say that strong, some of the strongest people are in recovery. Mm-hmm. You know, we go through a lot of really rough roads and, sure. and um, a lot of us bounce back and make it on top. And I was so. going to say, I feel like you would have to be a really strong willed person if you're, if you're going through recovery because not only are you dealing with what you're dealing with, but in a way you have other eyes looking at you trying, to, trying to see like, well, all right, how is this person going to deal with this? I would imagine it's just more of a motivation to keep doing what you need to do to get better. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, it's, it's about maintenance. Recovery is about maintenance. So, you know, you have to maintain the 
getting rid of the drugs and the alcohol is one thing, but actually mm-hmm. maintaining that and dealing with the underlying issues. And, and, you know, I think that people in long-term recovery are doing something to constantly try to better themselves sure. and be, be mm-hmm. a better version of themselves than they were yesterday. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I, I really think that's kind of what it's all about. Everybody has a different path, a different journey. Yeah, of course. You know, I didn't, I probably didn't get sober like everybody else and vice versa. And, um, you know, that's part of, M- how important MAT is, it's not part of everybody's journey. And so there's kind of a stigma behind it sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important to remember that who am I to tell you what your journey is supposed to look like? Sure. Yeah. So we, we have partnered with FEMA and TEMA through the state of Tennessee because of all the stress of COVID related stuff. Mm-hmm. We've partnered with them to be able to offer a 24 seven phone number. It's, it's not a crisis line where if you feel like you're about to harm yourself, or if you need detox, that's not necessarily the line, but Mm -hmm. it's a 24-7 line where if you just need to call because you are stressed out and want to talk to somebody about it and you're feeling isolated, or if you don't know how to apply for unemployment, or if you don't know how to do any of these other things, or you don't know what services are available, we've got trained folks who can help help do that. So we'll- I'll link that number in the description of this podcast. Great. Along with the Pathways link to the West Tennessee Healthcare website and their Facebook group. So if anyone listening to this podcast has questions for Donald or Mara or wants to find out more information, feel free to check out those links in the bottom. Donald, Mara, thank you guys so much for coming in today. Really appreciate your insight from Pathways. This has been another episode of We Talk Health.